Hello, everybody. It's James. Um, one more uh, CEO Jimbo show. Uh, um, still working on maybe renaming this, but until um, I come up with a, a new name, I guess this is what my playlist is. Um, CEO Jimbo. Um, I, I'm not a CEO. Um, I was a small business owner kind of with all the paperwork a while back um, when I lived in Cambridge um, and, and so on. I was trying to do solicitations for the U.S. government They're through their small business innovation research program and um, so on. Um, and this um, kind of led me into this um, study on MH370, um, perhaps. Um, anyway, this, once again, um, this uh, episode is on the disappearance of the Boeing 777 um, that was operated by Malaysia Airlines out of Kuala Lumpur in the Middle East um, uh, roughly 10 years ago. It was, I think, just over nine years ago um, and so on. So anyway, um, I don't really have anything super exciting um, this time. I, I just kind of added some color to this map just a few minutes ago. If you've been watching my videos, you've seen this map before. I've um, been telling you I was going to color it in and kind of working on it. Um, so th this is like India and this is um, Malaysia down here. This is like the Vietnam area. And up here's China. The, this is Kuala Lumpur and the flight was supposed to go from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing, China, which is kind of up this way a little bit. And they had kind of the route, kind of took it over the South China Sea a little bit. Um, uh, anyway, um, I, I did a lot of work on this this time, um, but really on my book, and I, I just can't, kind of came to realize that um, I haven't really done that much on, on the video itself. So um, kind of stay tuned in the future. Maybe I'll kind of find time to work on the videos a little bit more. Um, um, this, this is um, section three of my book, of four sections. And I've been doing these videos every two weeks. Um, and um, I've been rotating my book where like one um, two-week session, I'll work on, you know, it was section two last time and now it's section three. And Tomorrow I'll start on section four, do that for two weeks, and then shoot a video on what I have on section four, um, um, and so on, and then uh, move on to section one again, and so on. Um, this is kind of the um, uh, outline of it, and one of the first things I did uh, starting this one is I kind of rearranged it a little bit. If, if you're really paying attention in detail, um, I used to have radar kind of down in the bottom. I think it was like whisper in Marsat radar and I switched radar and in Marsat. So it's kind of like a walking tour. You kind of walk you through radar, then in Marsat, then this thing called whisper, and then on to um, sort of some innovation and other um, uh, navigational nuances, um, just pilotage and dead reckoning, and fuel management, how much fuel the plane had and that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, this is very extemporaneous. I, I just spent like maybe about 15 to 20 minutes kind of trying to kind of compose what I'm going to tell y'all. And I didn't really come up with too much. I, I just kind of rummaged through this uh, a little bit and um, kind of was practicing my talk. And I, um, I started out trying to do the whole thing on radar chapter nine, like I did. Um, if, if you've kind of watched, I, I did one on, um, uh, um, whisper one time where uh, the, the last time I, I uh, section three was up in the rotation, I just focused on whisper this time because of that um, whisper was like quite developed and the other three chapters were not. Um, so I, I set out and I started to kind of fill in and, you know, uh, radar and in Marsat. And then I skipped whisper and worked a lot on this one. And um, that's what I kind of have been doing in the last two weeks. I, I started on radar and I was going to kind of like just focus on radar, but then I, I kind of realized that I was getting out of balance where I'm trying to keep this section to about 50 pages. And I had, I was up to about 25 pages and I had radar and I had whisper 
kind of all filled in, and I really didn't have anything on either Inmarsat or this other one. So I figured, well, you know, I, I can't really um, keep, you know, building on radar and stay in balance. So I, um, um, I I switched to working on Inmarsat in this one. So right now they're all sort of about even Stephen, and I'm up to like about maybe 35 pages or something like that. I don't know if this shows page count. I, I was working on a laptop computer, and I just transferred this over um, to to this computer to show you and also to kind of keep it um, uh, doubled up. So th this is going to store for like two months. It'll come back up in the rotation about two months from now. Probably just kind of sit while I'm working on the other sections. Um, so radar, it's it, it has four sub chapters like all the other chapters. Um, sub sub chapter one is basic. Sub chapter two is turn contention. Sub chapter three currently is Celex, and so that's a company that makes radars like Malaysia Air, or Malaysia, like uh, air traffic control um, um, facility you, has equipment made by the uh, Celex, I guess. Um, uh, some of this I'm just really learning myself um, totally and, and other stuff I kind of like know from the past from various um, you know places and so forth um, and then section four is um, is about these two intersections where the plane ended up um, it um, disappeared off radar at um, intersection Vampy and Mikar um, which are, uh, we'll get to that in a little later. I'll show you that on the map and so on. Um, so radar basics, um, Igari area. Um, this, this is, um, I think anybody following this kind of knows this, that the plane basically was said to have gone up to, it, it just took off and it started to go kind of Northeast kind of on its course to Beijing. And this was Igari checkpoint where it was to, um, um, kind of change radio to Ho Chi Minh City and start talking to these people here. And this is kind of about where the airplane, um, kind of where the radio contact ended. And um, the the um, kind of the main radar ended where they there was the secondary radar they call it, which is the fancy radar that has the um, transponder and the aircraft kind of like went off of um, that radar and, and so on. And then um, then it, it, the m military sometime later kind of came back and said, I think it was like Malaysia and military in this area said that they tracked it kind of instead of going up here, turning left and kind of going out this way and then up kind of into the... Um, uh, uh, Adam and C area, um, and then disappearing off of that radar and so forth. Um, so, um, anyway, um, hmm. here we go. Back. So, into the secondary, um, Captain Sahari, or whatever his name is, um, acknowledged on, uh, oh, here we go, did something right, um, acknowledged the handoff from Kuala Lumpur air traffic control to Ho Chi Minh radar. Minutes later, the plane disappeared from radar control screens and in, indicating the transponder was either damaged or else had been deliberately shut off. The plane was, however, picked up by military radar, which watched it for over an hour. They saw it deviate from its original flight plan and head west, crossing the Malay Peninsula and the Adam and Sea before disappearing. Um, long time ago, um, I, I did made this Thing. I don't know if you saw this, but um, um, it was almost like one of my first few um, things on Malaysia Airlines. I was made these little maps here, and there's one, this one right here. I don't know if I ever featured this one or not, but um, 
and and I don't remember my source right off hand. I I wrote this from a source. It's sort of like a drawing of something that I was reading. But um, this flight took off on March eighth of of twenty fourteen. Yeah, just past midnight from Kuala Lumpur, um, uh, um, and um, what was the time? Forty one zero 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 is midnight in Malaysia time. It was zero um, zero four. I think that's a one. Anyway, it took off up here to the Agari intersection, and then the military it it changed from kind of that secondary fancy radar to this military radar that tracked it to this. Um, Penag Island place, and then it like supposedly turned and it went up here. So at two twenty two Malaysia time, um, I, um, it it um, it then disappeared off of radar here, um, and and I was just learning during this two week period that there was kind of a gap here that um, a little bit later then it kind of like then then the Inmar sat kind of picked up on it and then they got in Marsat pings, but there was sort of like a, there's sort of like this um, salient boundary as to when the radar ended and the in Marsat signals kind of like started um, or something like that. Um, so um, anyway, I'm trying to kind of sort all this stuff out and I even changed the name of my book. Um, this was kind of just in the last day or two over the weekend, I was like working on other things. And um, I don't know if this is going to stay or not, but it, it has been called the um, MH370 um, um, wrestling to make sense of the disaster or something like that. And it just seems too much like a research paper to me. And this is trying to be a book. And in the spirit of, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. I was trying to come up with something sort of clever that's kind of like, you know, um, doesn't exactly explain what the book is. So stay tuned on that, whether that sticks or not. Um, but that I'm playing with that idea right now. I don't know why, this, why that changed. I'm at 12 minutes, 40 seconds right now. So I, I need to kind of like start summing this up almost. Um it's going to try to find at least one juicy one in here somewhere. Basics, um, Penang area, um, primary rate. Oh, yeah, I, I, primary I, irony. I did, did a lot of um, word, what do you call it? Um, I do this a lot in writing. Um, um, word association, where I kind of read here, and then I kind of try to come up with a word, words, or phrases, and then I'll write it into my topic here. So I basically didn't have anything. I, I had chapter nine, radar, subchapter one, basics, P4, but I didn't have a title for it. So I read through this, and I came up with this title, Primary Irony, irony and Others. And some are fitting, some are not. Um, some I may leave, some I may kind of change later on um, as, as this develops and so on. But I came up, let's see, primary radar system based on the earliest form of radars developed in the 1930s. Detect and measure the approximate position of the aircraft using reflected radio signals. It does this whether or not the su subject wants to be tracked. The secondary radar system relies on targets being equipped with the transponder. So the irony here is this is fancy military radar that picked up on it is actually um, uh, an earlier form of radar. It's sort of you know it's it's um, you know it, it's more basic um, than the secondary radar and so on. So you know it, it cut, they kind of make it sound like this fancy military thing, but then the fancy military thing is sort of like you know really old school. Um, um, but anyway, um, I, I was talking about the companies that make that, the, the, despite that, the military did seem to have sort of like the latest version of the old technology, um, if that helps any, um, um, so kind of turn contention, um, esoteric information. Again, the same idea here. I read this and I just came up with esoteric information. I read the, this one down here and it came up with salience. I was talking about the salient borders of um, like 
that that where where the radar ended and the Inmarsat started, um, and so on. This there's another one kind of right at that Igari intersection, or the control of the Saga flight MH three three is the waypoint named Igari. The flight on route is transfer of control point. I don't remember um, where the salient comes from. Um, contact was lost just after the aircraft passed to that Vietnamese aircraft controllers realized that 370 had not contacted them, but Malaysia air traffic controllers did not notice the diverted westward thing. So that one's kind of weak compared to some of my other ones, I think. Um, vanished in route. So people plane that wasn't there. The air traffic controller computers to display the aircraft symbol, even though the EDSB signal had winked out. Um, so that's kind of, I won't even get into ADSB at this point. Um, I think I kind of need to sum it up. It's 16 minutes into this and some change. Um, turn contention, accuracy, and others. Anything, just looking for something that's just really kind of almost fun. Um, radar fog, that's not a good one. Um, five hour, four to five hour delay. Maybe there's some fun in that. Um, not until four hours after the disappearance did KUL alert the, the rescue coordination. Another hour, uh, another hour passed before ERTC CC issued the distress message launched. So there's, I think I've seen sort of like some people say that uh, Vietnamese airspace noticed right away that they didn't call in and were concerned. And there's sort of like maybe some other indicators that they sort of like didn't notice that the plane did not check in. They sort of forgot about it, that it was supposed to check in and like, it, it, you know, it, um, Maybe the plane was supposed to land at 6 a.m. In, in China and they didn't realize that it was late even kind of thing or something like that. Um, anyway, um, in Marsat, we're going to in Marsat. But in Marsat, it's the scuttlebutt basics. Um, Double Dandy and others. I, I don't remember what that was. Um, the report goes on to explain that Inmarsat developed a second innovative technique that took into account the velocity of the aircraft relative to the satellite. Um, um, yeah, there was... Um, I guess that's just going to have to be it. Um, um, but, you know, I, I definitely am wrestling with this for understanding, as you can see. Um, and um, uh, I think I'm getting there. Um, um, it's, um, there's, um, there, there was kind of some information about, um, uh, some hints that uh, the, the story was changing, like in a couple of places where I, I think it was like the Inman, in Marsat story kind of has changed and then changed again and that kind of thing um, or, or it changed and something else changed also. So kind of a list of things where the story is changing. Um, Anyway, um, that's going to have to be it. Um, sorry, this one's sort of wishy-washy. Um, hope you like it. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe and um, tell all your friends. Um, have a nice day. Cheers. Bye.